I don't even know what to say at this point. What a humiliating loss. Another one for Ron Rivera. His time in D.C. needs to be done along with this regime. We're going to talk about it in today's video. If you guys are new, please subscribe for a, you know struggling commanders fan it would really help out a ton and hit that like button and that notification bell as well it helps out a ton also check out bet us link in the description just absolutely crazy over 10 point favorites the washington commanders were going into this game at least early on in the week and they lose by double digits just absolutely crazy but at the same time predictable because you know, Rivera has a bunch, a bunch of very disappointing losses on, you know, going against bad teams here in D.C. But also, you know, this year you lost to the Bears when, you know, they were 0-4 and, and it was at home. You lost to the Giants early in this year and the Giants just absolutely own us. There's nothing to say. I am never talking trash to a Giants fan again until we prove otherwise because they just absolutely own us. I mean, they have the most wins against any franchise is against us. I don't know the exact number, but it's over 100. And recently, it doesn't matter. Honestly, we thought it was Daniel Jones. It's not, I mean, Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, Tommy DeVito. It doesn't matter who it is. They own us. I mean, Tommy DeVito, 18 for 26, three touchdowns, no interceptions. The defense, you know, they weren't amazing, but let's keep it real. The defense is not the reason we lost this game because they allowed, if you take out the, the pick six, 24 points. But when you turn the ball over six times, you're not putting your defense in position, in good position. And, you know, constant turnovers, you know, they're getting the you know ball in, you know, good field position. You're just not putting your defense in a good position. Uh, I'm going to talk about the game for a little bit, but a lot of it's just going to be talking about bigger picture things like Rivera and company. But, you know, the defensive line was okay. I mean, honestly, it was good. And the the secondary was the problem. But, I mean, we were getting sacks. I mean, David Mayo, two sacks. You got Jamin Davis with a sack. Jonathan Allen with a sack and a half. KJ Henry with a sack and a half. Drawn Payne with the sack. Benjamin St. Juice with the sack. Casey Tuil with the sack. Like, we were getting sacks. We were getting pressure. Sometimes, you know, we were allowing him to stay a little bit too long. But any time the defensive line didn't get any pressure at all, the secondary would just get cooked. I mean, Benjamin St. Juice got beat a few times. I thought Emmanuel Forbes was pretty good. Danny Johnson was getting beat a couple of times. And yeah, the, the, the secondary wasn't great. Some of the linebackers and coverage like, you know, David Mayo were struggling. But again, the defense was not the reason for this loss. I mean... Byron Pringle, one of the reasons, fumbles on a kickoff, cannot do that. It was a good kickoff return, and then you finish off with a fumble. It just can't happen. Joey Sly missed an extra point. That's only one point, but it's still, you cannot do that, and it wasn't even close. Uh, Sam Howe was not great today. There's no other way to put it. I think people are overreacting a little bit too much. People go crazy when he does well, and then go crazy when he does bad. I think you got to be a little bit more in the middle. Uh, 31, 45, 255 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. I will say that last interception, obviously it wasn't, it wasn't a good throw, but I'm not going to really count that. I mean, obviously it counts on the stat sheet, but it, it's not a big deal. I mean, he had got pressure right away. He was underdressed right away. And if he got sacked there, game was over because of the false start by Charles Leno and then you know them not calling a time I thought they should have called timeout after they converted the fourth and one I thought they should have or not the fourth one whatever they converted there might have been fourth and one it might not have whenever they converted that I thought they should have um I thought they should have called a timeout and they would have had the ball with 45 seconds at like the 35 40 yard line and they end up not calling a timeout and then false start and then they have to use their final timeout to stop the the runoff the 10 second runoff but uh, yeah, so that interception, not going to, you know, you know, hate how too much for that because, again, he's under duress and he has to throw something up. He could have thrown out of bounds a little bit more, but it is what it is. The first interception was bad. You know, Diami, not terrible, but, you know, Diami wasn't running the route well. Also, I mean, Diami, get him off the field. I mean, he had the drop. His routes aren't the best. At this point, we know what Diami is. And, you know, I guess if someone's down, you can put him in, but... I don't know. Give the ball to Terry Moore and Jahan instead of uh, Diami because Diami, his hands are not good. He does not go out. Like, I just don't understand because I saw someone tweet like, oh, the old Terry lived for moments like this at the end of the game. Well, the thing is, the old Terry got the ball 
they would just throw up the throw up the ball to him. Just throw it up and see what he can do. Like the Colts game, the Falcons games. Like they would just do that and you make the catches. This now they just do these dink and dunks to him. And it's like, man, why are we throwing, you know, a, a go, you know, putting Deami Brown in a go route and then just throwing it up to him? Why don't we do the same thing with Terry? Because I know Terry, if he doesn't catch it, he's not letting the other guy catch it. I know that for sure with Terry. Very rarely do quarterbacks get, you know, intercepted throwing it to Terry. It's it's very rare. Uh, that interception wasn't great. Um, I'm trying to think of the other interception. I forgot what the other interception was. It wasn't great. And then he had one that was dropped as well. So definitely not a great day for Hal. Uh, Brian Robinson, probably the best player today. 17 carries, 73 yards, 4.3 yards a carry. Did fumble once and they recovered it. Terry recovered it. Chris Rodriguez, 6 for 43. But doesn't matter. You fumble. You cannot fumble. And, you know, the thing is, six turnovers. And it's like every time you're like, man, like, this is the lot like this this turnover is going to put him away it's, and that it does it it doesn't but then the like it finally gets to a point where six turnovers and to zero absolutely crazy and this always happens against the Giants they put the stat up I remember that game where he had like five turnovers like Logan Thomas fumbled once Antonio Gibson fumbled once or twice uh, I think Isaiah Wright like it was so many fumbles and it was ridiculous and it's comical how we always always wet the bed against the New York football giants and they always play like all pros against us and it's gonna be funny watch us go I mean maybe not because it's so demoralized it's such a demoralizing loss that these players might be down but watch us go against the the Cowboys and put up a good fight like this is the team we we are we like play down to our competition and we play up to our competition like we were close against the Seahawks close against the Eagles uh, and it's just like, I don't, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. And obviously, it doesn't need to be said. Rivera should be gone. I don't care like about this. I mean, I guess it would be a little bit weird to fire him in a short week. But after Thanksgiving, man, fire him. Like, fire him and give Eric Bieniemy a tryout. And some people might say, you're putting in, you know, putting Eric Bieniemy in a tough situation. Well, the Raiders just did it with, I think his name's Antonio Pierce. He's doing a good job, and obviously the Raiders are probably not going to make the playoffs. But if he continues to, sh- you know, you know, put this t- their team in a good position to win, and you know they almost beat the Dolphins today. Well, okay, maybe they hire him as a head coach. And same thing with you know Eric Bieniemy. I I did not like the offense today. It was not great. Besides the turnovers, it wasn't great. And turnovers on coaching. Like obviously you don't want the players to make th- those mistakes, but like. Turning the ball over is undisciplined football. It's just undisciplined football. Chris Rodriguez, like, you just can't do that. Logan Thomas, we've seen a few of these from him now. You just cannot do that. And then who else? Uh, Byron Pringle on the kickoff. That's an EB guy. Chris Rodriguez, an EB guy. And then who else? I think that's that's it. And then the Sam Howell three interceptions. It's just absolutely pathetic, man. You cannot win a game. Like, it's insane that we were like 35 yards away, 40 yards away from winning the game with five turnovers. And then obviously we got the sixth turnover. Uh, How he had that one touchdown pass to Jahan. He also had a rushing touchdown. He needs to like, in that situation, it was hard, but he needs to try to limit those hits because he's getting hit a lot and getting hit in the head a lot. And it's going to catch up to him eventually. He got checked for concussion once. He busted up his lip. Like at some point, it's going to take a toll on him. And he's going to have to start going down a little bit more. Uh, and again, yeah, Hal was not great today, but he's not the sole reason we lost this game. And I don't want people to get too down on him overall as a QB. Bet US, America's favorite sports book, where you can bet on everything, anytime. Sports book, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign-up bonus. And to celebrate our 30-year anniversary, we are giving up to 30 risk-free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins. Make sure you guys check out BetUS. Link in the description. You guys can get 125% first-time deposit match with my link and there's still some games going on you got tonight the vikings and the broncos where the vikings 
are two and a half point underdogs. And then the tomorrow, the big game, the Eagles versus the Chiefs, the Chiefs are two and a half point favorites. Thank you to BetUS and bet responsibly. All right, so we're back. And now let's talk about the whole regime. I mean, Jack Del Rio, again, defense wasn't the reason we lost, but I'm done with him. Like, I mean, I, we've, we've been done with him. Like, this defense, especially early on in this year, was way too talented to be as bad as it has been. And I don't care if you think they're overrated or whatever. I'm, I'm sorry. The talent was too much for it to be what it was. Like, let's just keep it real there. Some people don't like Duran Payne, Montez Sweat, Chase Young, and Jonathan Allen, but those guys were all first round picks. Jamin Davis, Emmanuel Forbes, first round picks. And you know, you signed some guys as well to some decent contracts, like in the past, William Jackson III, Kendall Fuller. You made significant investments in this defense. And for them to be as bad as they were this year, like that's an indictment on, you know, Ron Rivera and his personal decisions and Jack Del Rio and his coaching and his personal decisions as well. Cause he, I mean, he loved Emmanuel Forbes. He loved, you know, probably Jamin Davis as well. And some of these other guys they signed and his scheme doesn't fit some of these players correctly. And yeah, I think that is a lock. He needs to be gone. Ron Rivera, of course, he needs to be gone. There's no way, like if Josh Harris, like I, there's very little Josh Harris can do for me to lose faith in him as an owner. Because again, like if you go from Dan Snyder or him, like what anything's better. But if he keeps Rivera, that's when okay, like I would lose faith as him at you know in him as an owner. I mean, when the guy Ron Rivera is a lot you know expected to do a lot better this year, or at least you know be competitive, like eight nine wins, and you go out and you lose to teams like the Bears, the Giants twice, and just some just pathetic losses, pathetic losses. And he says all the time about, okay, whatever, like takes three years, takes four years. But then in the off season, he's building these expectations up and whatever. The culture is a little bit better than it was when we, you know, he got here and that's the one thing he's done. But it just, you know, a lot of the players that are the best players on this team were here before he got, you know, here. So he didn't bring them in. So Rivera needs to be gone. It is what it is, you know. Great guy and everything, and you know, solid leader. But yeah, he, he needs to be gone. He's not a good coach. His game management is terrible, and you know, seems like he doesn't pick the right guys, the right players, and his personnel decisions, like I said, are awful. He needs to be gone. It's probably not ideal to fire him today or tomorrow because of short week to Dallas, Thanksgiving, everything. But I would immediately after the Thanksgiving game fire him. I mean, unless you win. Because that just is a weird look, like firing him right after a win. But I don't know. If, if you feel like you're going to fire him after Thanksgiving, you might as well just fire him now. And then, um, yeah, let Eric Bieniemy get his head start and see what he can do. I don't, it's a tough situation with the short week. But he needs to be gone. It, it's over here. And I'm just honestly moving moving on and, you know, looking at some head coaching candidates. Made a video about that. We'll probably make a video about him or some head coaching candidates later this week, some GM candidates as well. You know, the only silver lining in this, the only silver lining on in this is that the Giants won and they will be, it's going to be much tougher for them to get Caleb Williams or Drake May. And that was my fear. They've got three wins. The Panthers have one win and the Bears have their picks. So they're probably going to get the number one pick. So it's going to be hard for the Giants to do that. And obviously, our pick gets a little better. It's not a huge deal. And then the Bears lost today. So our pick gets a little bit better there. So obviously, not a big, like, not huge things. Obviously, I wanted us to win this game, even though it wasn't looking likely for us to make the playoffs. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. It's better, honestly. It would be better for this team to win, you know, at the end of the year, five games and how it looks good, just the defense and some of the other pieces aren't great than us winning like seven to eight games, getting the 15th overall pick and just not being able to get an elite player in this, you know, upcoming draft. That's that's what we want. We want some game changing players like, you know, hey, if we get a high enough pick, we might be able to get an elite receiver. I mean, Mar probably not Marvin Harrison, maybe you could get someone like Brock. Bowers or an offensive tackle. I forgot the guy's name, how to pronounce it, but the guy from Penn State. There's some other guys as well. Like 
you can put yourself in position to get a player to help out how or something like that so that i don't know man we're gonna talk about it and you know break it down a lot more later on this week because we have a lot to talk about coaching candidates gm candidates i think we can all agree and if anyone disagrees go ahead and you know say in the comment section voice your opinion but ron rivera the era the ron rivera era should be over in dc i think in the next week or two give bien a little bit of a you know, try out, see what he can do. And if he does well, okay, you can interview him and maybe give him the job. If he doesn't, okay, you know you're not going to go after BNME and maybe you can, uh, well, obviously the GM, ideally the GM will choose the next head coach. I don't want Bill Belichick or an old guy, or like even Jim Harbaugh, too much drama there. And again, he's old, he's been in the league for a while, or he's been in the league before and in college. I mean, he's not too old, but I, again, I want a more of a younger guy, a guy that hasn't had a head coaching job before. I just want a totally like new look, new era. Again, that I, th- I just think that's a better thing for the commanders. And yeah, I think Rivera is going to be done. The whole front office, because they're partially responsible for this as well. I think it's mostly on Rivera, but they also make some of the decisions with him. And he hired them. So if he's gone, they're going to be gone as well. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace out. Peace.